Hi guys, welcome to units uh, 37 and 38. In this units, we're going to study the earth and uh, basically learn from its structure uh, uh, how uh, other planets in the solar system would look like. So basically uh, the point being in here in terms of a structure, what we use on earth is seismic waves. And basically what they are, there are two types. There is the S wave, and there is the P wave. So what's the difference between them? If I have a slinky, and I thought I have one in here, and I couldn't find it. Anyway, the slinky can move in and out, okay? By compression, basically, you compress the spring. So it's going to compress, and that compression will move along the slinky. So this is the type of compressional waves. This is the P type. And then you have also the slinky can go up and down or in and out, okay? In either case, that motion is actually a shearing effect trying to basically dislocate the, the, the slinky. This is the S type. So they travel in different rates, first of all, and some of them cannot travel depending on the, on the density of the medium. As a matter of fact, the S waves do not travel through liquids. Using this type of, of, of information, basically, if an earthquake hits somewhere, based on where it propagates on the earth we will determine the structure of the earth so what do we know we know the earth is made up of four basically uh, uh, main uh, layers the top layer of course is the crust this is a thin layer it's about 50 kilometers on average uh, in terms of uh, uh, thickness and then you have the mantle which is a huge structure the mantle is hot not liquid and not in a liquid form, but hot enough for it to start to move on a very, very slow motion, okay, called the convection. Uh, beneath that, there is the liquid layer, and that is the core actually of the earth that is liquid, which is mainly iron and also some other elements, other like nickel. Uh, and then beneath that, due to the increased, to the high uh, 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 density, uh, the the, the, uh, the uh, iron, which is super hot in the core, uh, can reach temperatures around 6,000 Kelvin, which is similar to the temperature on the surface of the sun. That is the solid core, which is again mainly iron and nickel. So this is in terms of the structure of the of the Earth. So uh, uh, overall and based on what we know about it, the crust itself is made out of plates. Okay, those plates, they can contain uh, continents in them. So how do the plates form? They basically form due to the fact, as I mentioned before, that the mantle itself is, is moving. In other words, the top layers of the mantle are colder than the lower layers. And this induces a motion that is like the motion in your, in your, in your soup while it's boiling, that the, the denser material falls in, and the lighter materials come out that is in contact with the liquid part of the uh, of the core. So at that point, uh, at some point, you have points that are in and some points that they are merging. That creates rifts in the in the in the earth crust, and those rifts start to move apart because of this motion. And as this rift basically moves, so first of all, the Earth is divided into different plates. Those plates start to move from place to place. So that is one thing. The other thing also is that when two plates meet, due to the subduction and the pressure that is exerted by one plate over the other, mountain ranges form. So in a sense, this is how the geology of the Earth is formed. It's mainly due to this effect. Uh, so this is basically in terms of the Earth structure. Uh, the earth also has, because of the inner core that is super hot and it's metallic, mainly iron and nickel, it, it has currents and those currents generate the magnetic field. The magnetic field plays a major role in protecting life on earth because of the fact that that uh, a magnetic field extends into space and deflects the, the, the particles that come from, the, from uh, outer space, mainly the sun. So those are highly energetic particles and they get deflected into the northern or the southern hemisphere depending on the uh, uh, depending on their uh, charges and those are again uh, create the auroras that are known in the northern skies northern skies but also exists in the southern skies so the point being in here this is in terms of the structure of the earth the earth also has upper layers namely has a hydrosphere which is 
the water on the earth, which represents more than 70% of the crust. In addition to that, you have also the atmosphere. The atmosphere is made up into two uh, 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 main divisions, basically the troposphere and the stratosphere. The stratosphere extends very high in the atmosphere, but the, in the, 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 uh, the troposphere is about 10, 12 kilometers basically in height. And this is where most of the weather, most of the clouds form actually anyway. And then the stratosphere is where the ionosphere is located, namely that the particles that they are highly energetic, but they become uh, ionized. And this ionosphere plays a major role also in protecting life in, in, on the surface because the UV radiation comes from the sun and it interacts with the with the ionosphere basically and gets absorbed in it and emitted in all uh, ranges of frequencies that are not harmful to living organisms uh, ultraviolet radiation is very very energetic and the ionosphere stops it right in its tracks however due to human activity there is a release of carbon dioxide number one and the release of elements that go and destroy the ionosphere namely the chlorine to be more specific so uh, human activity is really damaging the, uh, the, the ionosphere itself and the overall atmosphere and leading to the greenhouse effect, which leads to global warming. There is data to back up this, uh, this, um, this, this details. So this is not a, uh, this is not a, a baseless uh, statements, but they are based on research. So this is in a sense uh, what the units are all about. And then we also have the last points in these two units, namely 37 and 38, the Milankovitch uh, uh, cycles, namely the fact that the Earth itself, the, uh, the ellipticity, remember that the, uh, uh, how elliptic the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, orbit of the Earth is, namely the eccentricity of the orbit of the Earth uh, is very close from zero, meaning that the path right now that we're going on is very close from a circle. But during at some other cycles, that value of uh, uh, eccentricity increases a little and the path becomes more and more elliptic. And that has drastic effects on the temperature on the Earth. At times, we will be very close from the sun and other times we will be further away from the sun. In addition, to the fluctuations of the tilt of the earth that will affect drastically the temperature on the earth but sometimes the earth will be far more exposed to the uh, to the radiation of the sun when it's closer there to it and at some other times will be far away from it it's in going to influence more so the 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 uh, the tropics than the uh, the uh, the northern or southern hemisphere however also the tilt of the earth is not fixed at 24 at uh, 23.5 it's fluctuates between 24 and a half to 22 degrees so at times the earth is a little bit closer to in its its alignment to the uh, to the ecliptic plane where it all goes around the sun so this also have effects as documented by the 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 uh, the uh, the geology of the earth basically also on the uh, on the earth itself so these are the two main features of the earth that we talked about in terms of structure and it's in terms of also atmosphere that we're going to try to expand later on based on what we know from the earth to other planets that's number one and number two also now we're deploying uh, uh, actually probes on other planets like what we did with uh, with uh, mars where we landed in 2017, InSight. And InSight actually has a probe that anchored itself on the surface of the planet, and that detects March, March quakes. So basically the Martian quakes as opposed to the earthquakes. So again, we're trying to expand, extend these ideas to the solar system. Thank you.